I think it's important to sort of reflect on all of our, our the folks that this that we touch each and every day. It isn't just the people that we serve, right? It's their families, it's their loved ones, it's uh, other professionals in the community. Uh, you know, all of our partners and stakeholders and everyone who has a vested interest in the well-being of, of the people that we serve. My name is Michael Levis, the Executive Director of Creative Options Regina, also known as CORE. When I think about, um, you know, some of the families that, that we're connected to and their life stories. I mean, these these folks, these these families have have had a tumultuous past. They've been caregiver. They've been advocate. They've been teacher. They've worn many many hats, and and throughout their whole life, they haven't been able to just be mom, or dad, or brother, or sister. You know, unfortunately, in our in in our service delivery system today, there's a lot of distrust that it, that exists. I think for us, it's you know, how do we bring together these these folks and start to develop that relationship so people can start to regain some of that trust and and be able to just be right. And and when I think of um, you know these our families, it's how can they just be mom and not have to fight anymore? Our voices. Our stories. Our community. I'm Gwen McGowan. I'm Jesse's uh, mother. He enjoys meeting people, talking to people. Uh, he likes sports, basketball. He likes to be active at all times. Since Jesse's been young, um, his father and I have always worked for him to be included. He's gone to the neighborhood school when he was, we took him out of special education and put him into the local school. From that, he went to um, Riffle um, High School, which we worked hard with the Association for Community Living at that time to get him into regular high school. I'm Jesse McGowan. I like playing basketball, soccer, and football, and like going to sports night. And then I like have good, like good friends and stuff. A little bit after um, high school, he uh, began attending Campus for All at the University of Regina. He would have attended for four years. He was up on the front with all the other education students when he finished Campus for All. His family all came down to watch him go across the stage. And because he had attended Campus for All, he was able to apply for the position with uh, the university. My name is Faith Severis, and I'm the coordinator of Campus for All. Campus for All is an inclusive post-secondary education program at the University of Regina. We support 12 students, um, all who have an intellectual disability, and they audit one class per semester. They're non-degree seeking students, and they get involved in the um, social life of the university and also in employment activities as well. About five years ago, Michael and I were standing around having a conversation and we were talking about um, the Campus for All students and the individuals that, that CORE supports. And we were talking about having a meaningful day and what a meaningful day is, is for people. Through the course of our conversation, we're thinking that part of that is work. And a lot of people enjoy going to work during the day or they work for various reasons, like to have money. They like you know being with people and being out, again, in a part of community and, and um, contributing to community. 4 to 40 is, is one of the initiatives that, that CORE has partnered with the University of Regina Campus for All on. And, and this initiative is really how do we connect the people we support um, and the graduates of the Campus for All program to meaningful paid employment. This is something that, uh, that I'm really passionate about in the sense that everyone that we provide services to, um, you know, they, they have value and they um, have a gift that they want to share with the world. And, and often what, what ends up happening is, is, you know, folks don't have a lot of choice and control in their day. And for many of the people that we support, they, they want to work, they're, they're motivated, they're passionate, they want to, to be like everyone else in, in their community that, they're, that they know and are connected to. And part of that is, is, is having a meaningful work, a meaningful day, which is a, a job, right? For, for so many of us, our identities are tied to our, our work, but yet for, for many people with intellectual disabilities, they, they're not even afforded that opportunity. My name is Roger. I'm a first time work at the FCC Unit, and I'm a 
Uh, got the first job there back in May 2016 there. I've been working with Bob well, with the uh, 44 program at the university, and I have been, been this job for a long time. So my job is to is a lot of surveys, to doing a lot of uh, mailing cards, to a lot of stuff there. My name is Ashley Kelly. I'm an associate analyst on the customer digital experience team at Farm Credit Canada. Two years ago in May, I actually participated in um, bringing the program to the marketing division, interviewing Roger and training and onboarding him and have supervised him since then. So they put their notes, put it there. there and they put all of them. So Roger works with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays and he starts his day by sorting NPS surveys into French and English and then he um, processes the mail for the floor, goes down to the mail room and delivers mail to everyone on the floor, which is a great opportunity for him to network and talk to people. He's very social and so he enjoys speaking with everyone on the floor. Awesome, well have a good day. You too, yeah. Hey, how are you? And then after that, he will go and work in the print shop, which is much more physical. So he will assemble notebooks, cut paper, and various tasks down there. And that's usually enough to fill his Tuesday and Thursdays. And it's hot, but they put uh, a thing, coil thing there, black coil, and then a hose there on top. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a notebook? Um, Roger's just a very eager person for life, and I think he loves to be involved in the community, and so we have really been able to help him expand his world a little bit. We give him meaningful employment here at FCC, and he rewards us by being involved in all of our community programs and just really bringing lots to work every day. Jesse works at the University of Regina and often meets with one of his supports, Sawyer, on campus before work. I work at the gym pretty it's pretty neat there. I like working. It keeps me busy and act active. It gives me money and f freedom, and it's, it's pretty good. The job he has right now fills what he needs. It fills his hours and fills his days, and then he has regular Saturday, Sundays off when the other guys are off and stuff like that. He gets paid well, he has benefits, he's unionized. <laughs> and you know, there's lots of people still kind of in his world there. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. For Michael Lavis, Creative Options Regina approaches complex issues in a unique way. When I think about CORE and in terms of the services we provide, um, all too often people are familiar with this whole notion of sort of group home, group living, um, supported independent living, um, and, and then approved private service homes um, or family share type, type arrangements. These are programs that really exist across the country. And, and often what that means is the program exists um, or the facility exists and, and you essentially place people into these spaces, right? For CORE, I guess what really what makes us different is that there's no, we're working at 100% capacity 100% of the time in the sense that there's no facilities that we place people into, there's, there's no spaces and programs that people join, it, it doesn't exist. Really what, what's happening is when there's someone that requires services and, and support, working together with all those who have a vested interest in their well-being and understanding what's important to the person, but more importantly, what's important for the person, and collectively um, developing what that support looks like. So the, the supports and the services are, are tailored um, or personalized to meet the hopes, goals, needs, dreams of each of the people that we serve. My name's Casey Manick, and I'm in the family support role at court. It's just the small things that add up and make a really big difference. And even when we look into, you know, something as small as a phone call that makes a family feel more connected to the support team and then over time I see that they're just independently inviting themselves over to the house and feeling as though they're really a part of the home and part of the team that's a huge success for me it's just the really the smaller things that really add up and make a big difference my name is Mona Rooker and I am Brooklyn's mom this is Brooklyn Rooker and she's our youngest child of three mommy's gonna sit with oh! you <laughs> Yay! 
Core isn't just open to and focused on the individuals like Brooklyn. They're also focused on us as families and like what do we need to help us be doing better or give back or what do we need to receive and they'll ask all these questions. And they have like a family worker that meets individually with us to, to ask us all of these things and where we feel Brooklyn, you know, how she's doing and so on. And then the staff will help us problem solve and they really have the answers more than we do. So we look to them for, for our resource. My name is Alicia Breen and I am a home support at Creative Options Regina. A lot of the individuals that come into our organization, um, they've grown up really institutionalized. Um, they've grown up where relationships can't be the forefront of the organization. It can't be because when you have so many individuals to only so few employees or workers, it's really hard to be able to cater to the needs of every individual. When people come into our organization, lots of times there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot, there's a life of, of pain. Every time we meet, we're planning how are we going to work together and as a group with the individuals to help them live their best life, to help them work through whatever they need to work through and, and do what they want to do and be passionate about what they want to be passionate about. Ruby Walker is passionate about art. Every week she attends an art class led by arts encourager and educator, Mickey Eberts. I have an iPad and I have a whole bunch of crafts on there. So I pick one craft and then send it off to Mickey and this is what I want done. This is what I want the art to be. And then we plan it on, a, on paper and then start it. Start the art slowly. You have to plan your um, art first, and then like put it in drawing. This is supposed to be uh, Noah's Ark. Mickey explains to Ruby how to cut popsicle sticks for her Ark Art project. Okay. So you see this part? Oh yeah. That's your cutting edge. So if we rotate it, oh. yeah. There yeah. we go. Now your cutting edge is right near the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to hold it. All right. Ah. Whew. Oh. What I try to do is make art as approachable as I possibly can, by, but also using it as a tool for education and mm -hmm. engagement and just trying to make people feel like the time that they spend here is, is valuable and they feel valuable with the creations that they make. When they come, it's, this is their time. They make what they want to make, and I want to give them as much control as possible. If, if Ruby wants to come in and change her design, that's her choice. She's got to put in the hard work, but, and she knows that. But yeah, she's, uh, she's here, she's engaged, and these are all her ideas. I, I wish I could take credit for them, but no, these are all her amazing ideas. You're awesome, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Mona clearly remembers what life for Brooklyn and their whole family was like before they found Creative Options Regina. It's like when you go through trauma, you know, that is so significantly in your mind because you're caring not just for her but for your whole family you know and so what was it like before core came into our world well i would describe it as a world of isolation you know we had little bits that helped us kind of survive but we really had trouble surviving and um, she had a lot of needs. Our other two kids, 
you know, um, took a role in helping her with her needs for sure, and my husband as well, but it was so exhausting. And it was so sad because I felt, I got so that I felt scared. Like I felt scared that, you know, if we don't get help soon, then how will we be able to participate in her life in the future? Because we were so getting so wore out, you know, and and thankful we thankfully we were able to get help, and we were still at a place where, you know, we could contribute because she's our child. We always want to be able to be in her life and help her with her world as much as our other kids, you know, and they help us with ours but it was a dark place it was a dark time and it was a really dark time Casey Manick views her role as one that builds a bridge between CORE's support teams and families typically when individuals would come to us um, we would pour all our love and support onto them. And then families were involved, but we just weren't really spending as much care and attention with them. So my main role is to make sure that families feel as though they're part of our support team too, because historically in the field, we haven't always done a great job of including families. Um, typically it's viewed that the organization and the support team are the foundation, and then the family is sort of a guest or a visitor in the person's lives. But um, my role is focused on kind of flipping that and changing the perspective that family is often there forever and they deserve to have a spot at our team and they have a lot of knowledge and expertise to bring as well. Jessica knows the importance family can play. She'd been separated from her younger brother, Patrick, who was living in another town until being brought to Regina and finding support with CORE. So this was one of the pieces that I really liked. Um, it has all his circle of people in it, his immediate circle. People that he sees every day. It has things that he likes, like chocolate milk, car rides, sugar, <laughs> nuggets, some of his figure paintings. I really like that he takes an interest to doing stuff like this, uh, whereas before it wasn't really doing any kind of art, really wasn't on there. I love that you can tell, like, that he did it, you know? Like, his little eyes and stuff like that. I think before he came to court, I think a lot of the supports he had outside of the longer standing ones were afraid to do anything with him. So I don't think that he got as much outing or socializing, um, where now I'm noticing that he seems to always be out. If I call a house phone, it never gets picked up because Patrick is somewhere doing something, which is great. Another thing that I've never had before is is if I was to tell Patrick something like a, a direction or like, no, Patrick, you can't do that. I've never had him wait for somebody else to come tell him, no, Patrick, you can't do that, and then him listen um, before, which, which um, there is a support here. A couple of them that I've seen him do that with, and it's just, it's even like that pressure lifted. It makes me feel less alone. It just, I feel like CORE and the people in CORE are just a blessing to me. And I just feel like, for me, that's creator or God's way of letting me know, like, you're not alone and I'm still here for you. Yeah. So we have about 30 plus families that we're connected with in CORE and it's really difficult for me to connect with the families if I don't first connect with their child. So um, I'm in a really privileged position in the, in the organization and that I get to connect with everybody. So um, I feel like it's super important to make sure that I have that relationship with their child first before I come to them for any support or resources that they might need. So um, that's also a beautiful part of the job is just being able to get to know so many different people and 
And whether it's sitting face to face in an office setting or whether it's going for a coffee or a walk around the block or whatever it is, just to make sure that that relationship is built, it's, it's just great because every day is something different and it's something new and it's really natural and organic and doesn't feel forced or, you know, awkward, I guess. <laughs> right. Can't say enough about the philosophy and the supports and how they find the supports and stuff. I think as far as having a, a child with a disability, it's the next thing to being at home. I think it's been good for him and definitely good for us as a parent gets older. I mean, he left home when he was 34. You know, that's getting up there type thing. You know, when we found, and there are people that we know with children, they're not children, they're adults that are older than Jesse that haven't been placed yet. For us uh, personally, it's taken a lot of um, stress, worry, <laughs> pressure <laughs> off of uh, my husband and myself. What song do you want to sing, Brooke? Oh, ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 mm. who wouldn't go? When I ask myself, how will your kids make out? Will they be okay? And as I, as I then went through each of my kids, when I got to Brooklyn, I could say, yeah, she's going to be okay. I mean, even if I'm not in her world physically, there's so many loving, caring, supportive, people and it's really because of core like core does not just have a an organization that really looks good on paper and have the policies that really look good on paper <sighs> they do it they do it in action when we think about um, disability, we think about the challenges that, many, that the folks that, that we provide support to face. It isn't their disability that's the problem. It's this, this deep sense of loneliness and disconnect from others. When we, when we look at the, the work that we do, the, you know, what excites me is that, that you know, what is our purpose and why do we exist? And it's to help develop that, that sense of connection with others, right? As an organization, our, our central purpose is to nurture, teach, and sustain the experience of connectedness, companionship, and community. Um, this is in, in, you know, at the core, at the essence of, of, of why we exist. And it's about building connections and relationships that are meaningful um, with others so that you aren't thrust into this situation where you're, you're alone and isolated and, and are dependent on that five or 10 hours of a, of a worker that shows up at your door to help you with whatever it is that you need help with, right? How do you help build relationships that are, that are meaningful um, and extend beyond those that are just paid, you know, to be there? These are just some of the faces of the people who receive support from Creative Options Regina. Writer, producer, and director, Adrian Halter. Cinematography, Adrian Halter, Taryn Snell. Camera assistant, Joel Tabak. Editors, Adrian Halter, Miriam Bakhtiar. Sound design, David Roman. Integrated described video specialist, Simone Cupid. Senior producer, Jennifer Johnson. Production supervisor, Janice Civitelli. Director production, Karen Nye. Director programming, Brian Perdue. Vice president programming and production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2018, Accessible Media, Inc.